Boom. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our weekly you. town hall. Um, Maria, Maria Carmo is with me, one of the members of the of the Catalyst coordinator, one of the funded proposals. Uh, she and her team will be pre presenting their progress. Uh, but even before that, I wanted, uh, Maria, I wanted to invite you to welcome us to the town hall. Let me share my screen so everybody can see the, the slide. And feel free to start whenever you're ready. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Maria Carmo, and I would like to welcome you to the experiment. Things may break, lack documentation, differ greatly between interactions, disoriented, overload, and inspire. But our goal here is safe and lively, and provide environments for you to explore the highest potential of the human collaboration. Welcome. Yay. Thanks, Maria, and welcome, everybody. Um, so I think we're actually going to start with a, a recording of your team uh, presenting your your progress. So let me let me share that video. Hi, everyone. Thank you for saying hi. Everybody's welcome there in the chat. Hi all, this is Keith from Lovelace Academy, and thanks for tuning in to our session as to how we're going uh, with our Catalyst proposal. So to do a bit of a recap, uh, we just want to go through what our original proposal was. So the key thinking behind this was that Cardano is currently placed to be right at the heart of this explosive area of innovation where we've built the most advanced smart contracts platform across the entire blockchain industry. So much thought has gone into it over the last five years. So it made sense for us to, to go ahead and kind of evangelize this whole platform to the rest of the world and get people excited and get them a good um, good starting point on how they can build on top of, a, a, of Cardano. So the key thing there was just to attract uh, all the developers out there. So we know the world has just a ton of uh, really smart people uh, that want to build on top of the next kind of big thing in terms of the innovation. Uh, and then we want people to have that opportunity to build something amazing on top of that. So uh, just to recap our approach, so we haven't changed much from what uh, how, how we were going to deliver the content uh, to the aspiring developers. So we still have two facets. Uh, one, that's the video tutorial, so what we publish on YouTube to begin with. Um, as well as accompanying written documentation uh, with the source code. So this is what we've been building behind the scenes, really trying to set a good framework so that publishing the content is as easy as possible. What we currently have published, uh, so at learn.lovelace.academy. So if you go ahead and Take a peek at what we've published. So essentially, we've expanded the scope somewhat. So we're no longer just focusing on smart contract development. We are kind of getting people um, in tune with what it takes to start building off on Cardano in the first place. So uh, you really need to learn these fundamental topics before even attempting to to code smart contracts. So this is why we wanted to have a progressive approach uh, to releasing this this uh, relevant documentation so that people can actually learn these core kind of primitives and build up the knowledge before they even get to the smart contract. So this is why um, you know we wanted to get uh, all these fundamentals straight out to begin with. Um, make this a bit easier to read. There we go. So we wanted people to really just understand a lot of the basics first, uh, get playing with, um, you know, 
setting up the node locally. And then also, you know, the most important thing was on top of the videos, we also have the ability to, to give the source code uh, so that people can really just, you know, paste it into their relevant IDE, for example, you know, Visual Studio Code. Uh, and then you can execute it um, as, as you need. So this is one of the things that we found um, was, you know, was really important to make sure that people have the ability to watch uh, a, a developer build something, but also to be able to copy his code and also experiment uh, with the other options. So the other thing we, is uh, we wanted to, you know, from, from that, we wanted to build a progressive way to, uh, you know, for other people to expand on, on building on top of Cardano. So no longer just running the node, but also how you can mint native tokens, how you can build smart contracts. Uh, we might even, you know, dive into how you can build state pools in the future. But yeah, so that's that. Uh, the, the other thing was, um, the final thing was we wanted to make this accessible to other languages uh, for people across the world. So uh, if you are interested in translating bits and pieces of information, so the good thing is most of it is code, uh, but we will need help to get some of the meatier bits of documentation in other languages. So if you, if you can uh, help out, please reach out to us. Uh, we would really like to get the whole world involved. That's me. Thank you very much for listening. Cheers. Hi, everyone. He is Maria Carmo, a third of Lovelace Academy. Here is the page of our channel where we have some content for beginners. That's kind of revolution and make sense of blockchain. If you don't watch, please check it out. I also have a manual, how to submit proposal to Catalyst, because I think the community was really, really need to learn how Catalyst work. And we have a video with Mihaela Oliero, that was the person that was responsible to bring Singularity to Cardano. We also have some views, some comments, some likes. Here is uh, 521 subscribers, we are growing. As you can see in this graphic, this is the last 28 days of the channel, plus 118 subscribers, what is very good for a small channel. And here I can show what type of device are all these people using. So 48% computer, 48% mobile, and then 2.5 TV and 1.6 tablets. So I think with, as we go along, the data will improve and I can show more from the back end of our channel. Thank you very much. Keep safe and I talk to you soon. Hi all, this is Shweta from Lovelace Academy. In Lovelace Academy, we constantly focused on getting more and more aspiring developers to join Cardano and we teach them how to build on Cardano blockchain. Our colleagues, Keith and Maria, they are already doing a fabulous job. Lovelace Academy has various social media platforms like Twitter, Telegram, and emails, which makes it easier for people in any part of the world to reach out to us and to ask their queries. Recently, I got the honor to get featured in the Forbes for my work in Cardano and around Lovelace Academy. We beautifully utilize that opportunity to get people excited about Cardano. As India has the most population of IT professionals in the world, and I happen to be from India, so personally, my goal is to get more and more people from developing countries like India to learn coding on Cardano blockchain. We have quite a lot of interested volunteers to join a, a space recently. Apart from that, I am also working on a smart contract based on insurance sector, which can be operated using Marlowe language. But more on that later. Till then, stay safe and see you soon. Bye. Wonderful. Yay. What a nice, what a beautiful video. Great presentation. Um, and it's nice, it's nice so I can, <laughs> we had a video of Maria and we can also have a live version of you. And, um, I don't know, like, first of all, anything you want to say to the community if you're here with us? Uh, 
first I would say to the community to welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being every single town hall. Thank you for be building it. If you don't know me and you are getting here today, my name is Maria Carmen, a Cardano ambassador, also a SPO and uh, a third of Lovelace Academy. And for me, it's an honor to be here in this space talking to you today. Thank you very much for having me here, Dor. Awesome. Um... Any requests? Uh, you know, let me like let me run the at least just your the slide of your team so people will know how to get in touch. Um, okay, okay. So I think you see you can see there's a a Twitter account yeah, you can Lovelace follow. Acad yeah, Academy Lovelace is our Twitter account. You can go over there and ask us questions or ask for our groups. We have a group on Telegram. We have a website. If you need any link, if you need any information, just reach out to us. Great. So um, any special requests from the community? Like I saw you were looking for people who want to take on some translation work to make it more accessible for you more know, people in the world. You know me. I'm a educator. I love languages and I would love to translate Lovelace Academy for as many languages as possible. Obvi obviously, my urgent language is Portuguese. So if you speak Portuguese and you would like to work in the team to translate our content, please welcome and show up. We'll be here and you will be a welcome. And there are other languages like Spanish, Russian, many, many other languages. If you feel that is the right job for you and you want to contribute, is what I'm doing day after day, showing up and contribute and showing up and contribute. So if you think you can contribute to Lovelace Academy, please reach out to us. Awesome. Okay, thank you so much, Maria, for coming. Thank you for your team. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of presentations. I'm gonna be pretty efficient. Um, we have a a video from uh, Ben, uh, which is part of the Liquid Liquid team. I think they presented like I think uh, a few weeks ago, and they already have uh, an additional update. It's, so it's good to see the rapid progression. Um, and again, I'm gonna challenge my computer literacy skills and try to try to launch this video. One second. Hi there, and thank you for joining us for today's uh, brief demonstration of uh, the Liquid Lending Platform. This is a joint project between MLabs, Haskell Consultancy, and Liquid Labs. Let's jump over to our demo environment. So on the left, if you saw our previous demo, you might be familiar that we have a simulated blockchain running in the same environment with the same semantics as Plutus will run when it does go live. Uh, we've thrown a few extra logs and some color in just to make it slightly more readable. Now, over on the right-hand side, we have our uh, draft of the user interface, and, and uh, these are all kind of working in orchestration as you would expect them to so that we can see changes back and forth for most of what we're going to be doing today. So what we will be doing today is we're going to walk through uh, simple user interactions with the application, uh, supplying ADA, withdrawing ADA, uh, borrowing against it, uh, repaying that borrow. And we're going to talk a little bit about the technologies that enable uh, everything you see here. Uh, so let's, let's just jump into it. Let's go ahead and uh, supply some ADA into the system. We're going to supply uh, 10,000 ADA. And uh, we're going to get some Q ADA, which represents our, our sort of bank deposit, if you will. And currently, Q ADA exchanges at 5 to 1. So you'll see we have uh, less 10 in transaction fees, 10,000 less ADA. And we now have 2,000 ADA representing 10,000 deposited ADA. So 2,000 Q ADA kind of representing that 10,000 ADA that we just put in. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and hit borrow. We're going to borrow uh, 5,000 ADA. And this is going to collateralize our Q ADA. So it's going to leave our wallet. We're going to get the ADA that we're borrowing. And this will work across currencies. 
Uh, currently, we're just working with Ada. So uh, here you can see our Q8 is gone. It's not gone forever. It's just locked in the contract. And our ADA has increased less transaction fees by uh, about 5,000 ADA. Now uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, repay that borrow. And this is going to release our collateral. So we get that back. So each time you'll see that there's a blockchain transaction that occurs. And then we'll get our balance update. There we go. So now we're back down. Uh, again, we have a third set of transaction fees. And then we're back down to our original state after depositing. And then if we want, we can start to withdraw our QADA back out. Uh, so I'll do a partial withdrawal of just 5,000 ADA worth of QADA. Things will sputter to life. And we may see some discrepancies here because interest has been charged. So uh, in our per block, we actually have a quite high interest set for this demonstration, just so that we can see that there will be some discrepancies. Uh, that's not currently reflected on the front end, but that's sort of the next step in our development. So that's just kind of a quick walkthrough of, of the general steps involved uh, that you might interact with liquid lending uh, in the, in the live environment, if you will. But I'd, I'd like to talk a little bit about how we built this and uh, how things are going to look as we work towards uh, getting this out into production. So uh, I mentioned on the left, we're running a simulated blockchain. This is using the Plutus application backend simulator library. So this is part of the Plutus library. If you go on to GitHub and pull it into your own project, uh, it does take some setup to run it in this particular way. And then we've gone and added logs on top of it. Uh, but that's sort of the general idea is as you're running the simulator, you're actually able to uh, interact with it via HTTP similar to the way that you will um, on the day of deployment uh, into the wild. So we've, we've built up an SDK that uh, does the validation around those calls and it's, it's growing and sort of to, to add convenience functions. It's, it's growing to add validation as well. In addition to really simple APIs, just to go ahead and call uh, the various endpoints that are going to be available on a Plutus contract. So uh, how is this built? Uh, this is built using PureScript because it's very easy, either manually or automatic, to move types and logic from Haskell into PureScript. And PureScript conveniently piles, compiles down right into JavaScript. So uh, we can sort of maintain a lot of the correctness and the semantics that we're getting from Haskell, but uh, still have a great JavaScript uh, friendly SDK that sort of works as uh, a lot of JavaScript developers are going to expect it to. Uh, so that's all done with PureScript. So you're going to see we have both the PureScript and uh, JavaScript tool chain right now in this, and, and it's going to be available as an NPM package at some point. Uh, now, as this moves to production, I expect there will be some small changes to PAP. And so we're going to be maintaining this and, and growing it and making it more complete as we move closer and closer to getting a test net and then finally getting a main net uh, for Gogan. So uh, that concludes today's demo. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day, everyone. Yeah, well, I'm having a great day. More like a great night. It's 9, 9 p.m. here. Um, wow, this was cool. I think they're moving. <laughs> Thank you, Liquid Team. Thank you, Ben. Um, as usual, you know, we should, we should like host you in a live chat at some point because I'm sure like everybody wants to learn more and have lots of questions. But uh, but anyway, you guys are you guys are great. Um, all right, moving on. We have more. We have we have even more uh, presentations. And the next one is actually another yet another video from uh, uh, from Kyle. He also presented here a few weeks ago, and he's also making significant progress. So let's let's see what he's got.
Hey everyone, it's Kyle. Hey everyone, it's Kyle, the lead developer of Cardano Sharp. And today I want to give you a quick overview on some progress that is being made. But before we jump into that, I just want to say thank you uh, to the community for expressing you know, all your support and interest in what we're building over here. Uh, we're working really hard to get this library built for everybody. Uh, we're really anxious to use it ourselves. But yeah, thank you for all the support that you're showing. Um, anyway, let's jump into the updates. All right, so let's start off with the EF Core update. So our EF Core library allows .NET developers to quickly start reading from the Cardano DB Sync database. Currently, we are up to date on version nine. So if you have a, you know, a Postgres database ready with Cardano DB Sync, you can add this library to your application and start reading from the chain um, or you know the database. Now, what this rule, this library really entails is it has scaffolded models and relationships that will allow you to get information and do your joins and you know start connecting all that data. So let's look at some updates, or I'm sorry, some uh, some examples. Now, these are three very basic examples. Uh, the first one ultimately is going to get you all the blocks in an epoch. Ignore the comment, it's supposed to say get all, not get it. Uh, but yeah, you can see that I'm looking at epoch 266. Uh, what it's going to do is gonna return all the blocks uh, that have that are associated with that epoch. Uh, the second example will essentially look at a given pool. So you can see I have pool ID one. Now note this is a database ID, not like a pool hash or anything like that. Um, so we can look at that particular pool and we're gonna group it by the epoch number. <clears throat> um, and we're gonna get all the stake by epoch. So this will return back a list of all the, all the delegation for a particular pool by epoch. Uh, the second one is, in my opinion, where things start to really get fun, and this is where I like to really explore the chain, look at the metadata and whatnot, uh, and that's what this is doing. So we look at a particular transaction. You can see, again, this is a database ID, not a transaction hash. Uh, but what we're doing is we're taking the transaction and we're asking not just for the transaction, but also the metadata that is associated to that transaction. Now, like I said, these are three very basic examples. We can do much, much more. Uh, if you want to explore NFTs, you can start exploring NFTs with stuff like this and looking at the transaction native assets and looking at the metadata that's associated to them and you know checking out what people are really building on Cardano. So this is really fun. You know, if you want to build an explorer or NFT explorer, not just like a block explorer. Uh, but yeah, so you know. Definitely hit up this library and uh, start poking around if you are a .NET developer and you're you got a Postgres database. Definitely anxious to hear feedback um, from you know what we can do to make it better. Maybe if there's some extra uh, like helper queries or scenarios that we can put together. But yeah. All right, so let's talk wallets now. In Cardano Sharp, there is a wallet library, and this wallet library really has two parts. Uh, part one would be wallet management. Part two is building transactions. Uh, so we have part one done. Um, and what we can do with that is we can generate mnemonics. We can create, restore wallets. So, you know, you can take that mnemonic and create a new wallet, or you can take an existing wallet and feed it in and, you know, load your existing wallet. Um, and we can also generate the addresses for, the, for those wallets. All right, so let's look at an example. Um, now I'm going to just give a high level overview of what's going on here. Um, so in the first part, essentially I'm just generating a 24 word mnemonic. Uh, you can see the number 24, that just denotes the number of words that I want. Uh, in the second part, I'm getting my root key, uh, which is the basis of the wallet and I can generate all my private and public keys basically from that root key. Uh, in the second part, um, or I'm sorry, the third part, you can see I'm generating my payment, private, and public key. Um, and the fourth part is my staking, private, and public key. Now, with those two pieces, I can then, in the very last step, create my address. Now, this is known as a delegation address, right? So we all know that if I accept ADA, if I'm staked to a pool, that ADA will automatically get staked. Uh, and that's what this address that's being generated you know, is for. 
So yeah, here is a you know a few lines of code, and I can get up and running with a wallet uh, in my .NET application. So it doesn't matter if it's a web app or a mobile app or uh, a desktop app, and you know potentially even Unity, like a game app. So yeah. All right, so let's talk next steps. So we have EF Core reading from the database. We have wallet management. So the next pieces are very related to the previous ones. Uh, so, but let's start off with building and signing transactions. So remember, in the wallet side of the library, I said there were two parts: wallet management and well, building and signing transactions. So we're currently working on that. Um, this is actually what we are actively working on right now. This is definitely another uh, beast to tackle. Uh, but we have some really good examples out there and some good documentation that we can follow. And we're making some pretty good progress and definitely seeing a light at the end of the tunnel for this, which is very exciting. Um, and the second thing that we have up to do is the Dapper or ORM. So this would be very similar to the IFCore ORM, uh, but this is just another popular uh, way to talk to a database in .NET. Uh, it's a little more... Um, finer control, um, you're going to see a lot more like SQL S type queries, not the uh, more functional based um, approach. Uh, but yeah, so this is what we're doing next. Okay, so if you have any questions on how to get started, or you want to just track progress uh, more closely, or you want to be involved, or you just want to get your hands dirty, add some tests, uh, test out the code, uh, you know, whatever it is, um, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I try my best to make time to talk to everybody. Um, so far, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, but yeah, please reach out, uh, ask how you can get started, you know, even if you just join the Discord or follow us on Twitter. Um, that's a good way to follow uh, more closely. Um, I will do my best, especially on the Discord, to post updates. Uh, me and Daniel, the other uh, developer, are pretty active on there. So even if you're just on there and you want to chat about what's going on, please do so. Um, we are always happy to help talk. Um, you know, even if you have ideas or things that we could potentially do with the library, um, you know. Come over, share them, you know, get to know us. Uh, we're definitely happy to answer any questions. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching this update, and we're very excited to see what we can um, get going in the near future. So thank you. Yes. Beautiful. Um, wow, that's so exciting. It was nice. It's nice to see Carl's work, and also this field is, is present. It's really nice, um, and I don't know. It's like l l like listening to these three videos in a row. You can really see the you can really see the chain, right? You can really see those who people like Kyle building the the development infrastructure, right? Bringing bringing sharp uh, developers into our ecosystem, building bridges. Then you have you have a uh, the liquid team, right, and showing like a DAP uh, smart contract system, right, that could potentially utilize uh, those, uh, you know, the libraries and, and, and if they're sharp developers, and then you have, um, and, 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 and then you have uh, the team, uh, yes, team who are, who are doing um, uh, the Lovelace Academy. Who are, who are giving people like the, the information, access information and, and tutoring, and maybe even a bit of motivation to get started learning how to use all these tools. So it's like a beautiful, a beautiful chain. And it's beautiful to see that um, all these people are part of the cohort and they keep um, inspiring each other, right? And communicating and interacting uh, it's really, really great, and I can't can't wait for basically uh, adding more and more people to our to our cohorts. Um, so, speaking of which, I think this is a good good uh, 
we reached an important milestone. I think it was yesterday. And we hit 25, that's right, a quarter of a 100,000, 25,000 members. And of course we're, and we keep on, keep on growing. And this is, this is a, once again, an incredible milestone and just shows the, the, the momentum and consistency in which we progress. And it kind of opens our eyes, right? We kind of like, can we get to 50,000? Maybe we can get to 100,000. Um, you know, what is this, that, what does even that, that scale of people mean? You know, this is a, we're literally now a town, right? We're not even like, uh, we, we were, we used to be a, a tribe, then a village, then a small town. Now we're like a, a kind of a pretty nice town. <laughs> How all this changes, changes the dynamic between us, we don't know. We're going to learn together. And um, I just, just want to take this moment to, to congratulate us uh, for the environment that we created that attracted so many people uh, to be, to say they want to be active, they want to be updated, and they want to contribute. So this is great. All right. So some Here's some less great news. Okay, so uh, we were really expecting to launch uh, Fund4 this week. Um, unfortunately, some uh, forces outside of our outside of our control intervened. Ma mainly, the government of Argentina took our entire mobile dev team uh, on a forced vacation. Uh, in a really critical time, and uh, there was like, a, I mean, I don't go into the details, okay, but there was human shenanigans uh, because of this dependency. We need to postpone by a week. We're very close to, to launching. Everything is looking pretty good. We had a dry run that was pretty successful with the community. We're going to have on Monday uh, what I hope will be a final dry run. And I do want to notice the link on the bottom of the slides. If you want to help us, uh, if you want to participate in the dry run, help us debug, make sure that fun for runs smoothly, uh, join that, uh, join that uh, Telegram channel. And, and Monday, we will communicate with you about all about what, what's needed. Uh, given that this would be successful, and I think it's highly likely to be so, uh, the next day we'll do a final, final QA check, making sure everything is is okay. And if that's and if that's good to go, then we'll be happy to announce that uh, that on Thursday, on the third, we will finally launch Fund Four. Uh, again, things can fail, things can unexpected things can happen, but uh, I feel pretty optimistic. I really appreciate everybody's patience and resilience. Um, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to be great. Fun4 will be a very fun, uh, fun, fun. Not only that, but we're going to have some new integrations. So sometimes delays are have a positive effect. One of the impacts for the delay is that we can now confirm that we're going to have a uh, support for for those those of you using your own mobile and want to register so that would be supported and another issue we had is that uh, for hardware wallets we're supporting some hardware wallets so for those of you who are spos who wants to use your pledge um, and uh, convert that into voting power and using your hardware wallet you can use it with the cli interface and I want to thank Martin Lang for uh, exposing that uh, library and giving instructions like in the link provided. Just the only word of caution because registration haven't actually started. So if you're gonna play with the tool and start and try to register now, your registration will not be valid. You will need to wait for an official announcement that a registration starts and only then you can register. 
don't uh, okay so just, just like don't uh, you know be, be pay you, you've been patient so long it's be a few more days <laughs> that's, that's all I'm asking um but yeah but that's that's nice and uh, more and more more and more people have accessibility to participate in our process and that's great so and uh, finally quick updates uh, we are almost done if not done with the deadline for uh, the last stage of in the, of the of innovation for fund five which is the um review quality analysis phase okay in this phase we had veteran community advisors were looking all, all uh, on assessments uh, that were made by the community advisors and making sure there are um, of sufficient quality okay like a lot of a lot of uh, some assessments were flagged by proposers uh, or flagged by other other community advisors as being substandard so we're you know making sure that everybody get a fair fair review as much as we can and we can see there's been considerable amount of effort uh, 38 uh, veteran community advisors uh, so far and I think there's actually the number is a bit higher uh, submitted their work so that's like that's that's great and we really appreciate all your hard work and now we will compile and aggregate the final assessments uh, remove the substandard reviews and um, and pretty much, you know, all the proposals are going to be ready for Fund 5 governance, which will come swiftly after Fund 4 governance. And we will, we will let you all know about the dates uh, as soon as we know them ourselves. All right, so that's the updates. And I do want to, you know, I, 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 I'm honored to invite, uh, uh, to invite uh, Yuta Ekstin. Um, Yuta is uh, well. She's she's an expert in I think in in, in agile methodologies. She's a writer. She's an expert in soci so sociocracy and maybe many more things that I don't even know. Um, and she's here to to present us uh, the next evolutionary step of the town hall. I'm really excited uh, about that and. Um, maybe one last thing. So she's uh, she represents uh, Governance Alive, which is a group uh, of, of of consultants that's been working with us for for several months now. If not even like maybe six months, if you count everything, as we're planning this transition, okay, of the town hall from this like some person talking to you and you listen to you know like an interactive affair where we can all share a, a real connection and I'm so happy we get to this moment and um, Yuta welcome please thank you so much Doro excellent I don't know what I'm an expert in but um, now I have an echo can somebody help no you, you sound great uh-huh so I have an echo so I, I hear myself twice, which is difficult. Yeah, I, I hate when that happens. Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like our voice. So I hear you fine, but myself, I hear double. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I, so, I mean. I try my best to ignore it. Yeah, do you want to take <laughs> a moment to try to, um, you know, maybe like reset your audio settings or something like that? Because I know, I know it when it happens to me, I, I completely freak out when I hear my own voice yeah, yeah. outside my skull. Really <laughs> difficult. Um, ah, it says you should be muted. Um, okay, no, not really better. Um, well, I, I just try and I try to ignore. So, I really want to invite you to improve the town hall experience and and we have asked you uh, for a poll 
before we started. And uh, I still want to invite you to answer to that poll. And um, because we think the town hall experience is just one way of how things are happening or can happen in the town hall, but there are also other ways what could be possible. And we heard so many great experiences from the community like Loveless, Liquid, Kadam Shab and all of those. And we, we always are, I think all of us, really interested to hear what's going on there and also wonder what kind of help they need, they need or also what how good is my idea? Am I ready for presenting it here in the town hall? Or maybe I need some more help. So we really would like to offer an idea how you can get that experience out of the town hall. Before I get into that, what I first would, would like to do is to look at what is the actual experience in the town hall, at least kind of the way I see it. And this is more or less what, what I think is happening. So it's a one-way one way kind of presentation. So there are people on the screen and sharing what great stuff they have developed. And all of us, we are sitting in the auditorium and maybe we are whispering to each other by using the chat or something, but we are not really contributing we are not really part of it well we become part of it once we are away, invited on stage like lucky me i am today but what about if maybe we can also learn what other conferences have learned what can be done and i want to share that story from a guy called harrison owen so harrison owen has put together conferences like these like what you see on that picture, quite a lot of them. So um, he has put a great program together, invited inspiring speakers, had put a lot of effort into it, definitely with a team. And then regularly when he asked after the conference, how was your experience? And especially what was the highlight of the conference? Can you think of what the highlight was? If you think maybe of your own conference experience, actually what people regularly were saying, it's the coffee break. So now Harrison Owen has put so much work into putting that program together, but then people said, well, what's actually best is the coffee break. And well, maybe the coffee was extra good always or, or the snacks or whatever, but actually, that's not the point. That's not what people really liked about it. It's actually something else. And I want to dive into what is that something else that makes a coffee break different from a presentation by still being something like, like a conference. And maybe before I forget that, I want to say it right now. So Whatever I'm sharing with you now, what's happening in a coffee break is what Harrison Owen has put together as a conference format after he has kind of learned that. And there are a lot of other people doing that as well. Now let's um, examine what, hap what happens really in these coffee breaks. So starting with like in a coffee break, what we do is we just talk about stuff that's on our mind. So we are just getting together, like maybe um, those people you see here, they are discussing and probably they, they discuss what they just heard, but maybe not. Maybe somebody sharing something from work or something completely different. Then we also choose any kind of small group. So you don't see a, a huge audience here. You see, well, this one here is actually the probably the biggest audience that's available, but not like you've seen in that other huge room. So it's always kind of a small group thing, a more intimate thing that's going on. Then people choose if they want to talk or if they want to listen. Sometimes it's also kind of listening in and, and 
thinking, oh, is this really relevant for me? Am I interested in that? Like that guy here looks a bit to me like that. So kind of uh, observing what, what they are discussing and still wondering, am I interested in that? Or maybe I'm going elsewhere. And this is another thing about kind of the, well, yeah, going elsewhere has actually various um, very variants to it. So one is in any kind of such, such group in a coffee break, we start and stop talking on a subject on our own convenience. So what does it mean? It means on the one hand, we just switch topics just as we like. It's not that somebody says, well, but now it's well a quarter till and therefore the next session will be we will now talk about xyz well no it's just emerging it's happening so we are talking whatever is on our mind and actually if i am for example that guy here and i'm not interested anymore in what's going on here or where the topic has shifted or that we still talk about that stuff i'm walking over somewhere else whatever interests me more. So this is also a typical thing that's happening in coffee breaks. If um, there's a little bit more to that, so we decide on changing conversations, but also what we do in a coffee break, well, me might even choose not to talk to anyone. So speaking of myself, well, at the moment I'm on stage and I'm, I'm often on stage, I'm a speaker as well. So as, as Dor said, however, I'm not always happy speaking and I'm also going to conferences where very often you will see me like here sitting all by myself or even outside there because I just maybe I want to contemplate on what's going on or I just want to be by myself and think what's going on. And the thing is a coffee break format invites all that. So it invites in depth conversations it invites sharing ideas experiences learning from each other maybe finding allies making new connections or looking for old connections all of that at once and just by invitation only and now lucky me i i remember that i wanted to say that so all of these principles if you will have been taken by that guy I mentioned before, Harrison Owen, and he created a conference format out of that. So there are actually conferences happening nowadays that use those principles only. So there is no predefined program. The program or the agenda is emerging by the people who are there and who are interested in something really specific in a special topic. And so what I want to do here and which is, well, I'm representing right now, I and all my colleagues and friends from Governance and Life is I want to share what's our hypothesis and also what's our invitation. And our hypothesis is if we change parts of the town hall we all know there's stuff in the town hall we all love and we want to keep that definitely but if we change parts of the town hall to a more extended coffee break format which is actually known as open space technology if you have wondered about that so these conferences being run in the coffee break style they're called open space technology then we can have a more meaningful participation by seeking the information we need most of the, at the time. And so therefore, we really would like to invite you after the next town hall, this is next week, June 2nd, to participate in such an open space, such a coffee break format to find out if it really supports us in having such a dialogue, collaboration, and, and also does it help us strengthening our trust in networks? So the, the thing is, this could be something for you if you want to test your idea, if you have a burning question. So often what's also happening, if you remember what's, what's going on at coffee breaks, the same is true for open space, you can go there with the question you don't have an answer to and you can use the community to learn from them they will help you to find 
an answer to your question. Or if you want to share something, just go there. You can do that. If you want to offer your help, like we, we have heard, um, for example, Lovelace looking for people who help with perhaps translating, or I, I'm not sure what was it Karan Shab, or I believe they are looking for testers and maybe also for people programming, all of that. You can find your connections, the thing that you need the most, the thing that you want to offer in this format, format of a open space or extended coffee break format, if you will. And um, yeah, we, we really hope you will be there. Next week, June 2nd, after the town hall, we will provide the access to that open space during the town hall. So you should be there in order to get in. And everything else we will tell you there. And I'm really looking forward to learn from you, collaborate with you, having deep dialogues with you. Thank you so much and looking forward to it. Wow. What a great presentation. Yuta, I can't believe, did you do it all the, all the way while listening to your own voice in the headphones? You know, what I did was I put the speaker completely down. <laughs> so now I hear myself again, and now it's difficult again, but I had the speaker off. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. well, I, I really appreciate That's it. That's the trick. I, I, yeah, I, I, I think you, you, you did a wonderful job presenting this, uh, the concept. Uh, I think we're all really energized. And, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of people that want to take part in this experience next week. And, I hope and, so. and really, really thank you for coming and, and just sharing a beautiful invitation. Um, the you know all the people upstairs like our 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 town our town hall admins uh, i think kyle is around i would love to invite him to share a bit his experience uh from an open space uh if it's if it's possible and while we try to do that um you know i just want to you know just like maybe a bit of a summary from my like my own perspective you know why why it's so important, you know, why, why are we taking so much time and energy to to make this happen? Because it's really important, okay? It's because we see, we foresee, okay, how governance in Cardano is gonna evolve. And we understand that this is a, this is a global community with many different people that have many different perspectives and different interests and different incentives and the way it's going to work is by learning how to communicate and interact with each other and listening to each other and also learning how to speak and voice voice ourselves and here's kyle kind of jumped for a second okay when when kyle shows up um I mean, anyway, I, I'll just say that, you know, so it's like, there's something that is like, I think it's it's like really building our fund foundations, you know, not just like technological foundations, but our social fundamentals. And by doing this, doing these experiences and learning from these experiences. And there's also something for each one of you. Okay, so and and, and, and you really made it very, very clear, but it's like, you know, this is a great opportunity to connect with others, great opportunity to grow and, and, and actually test yourself and, and, and grow yourself and challenge yourself using new formats and new ways of, of, uh, of um, communication. And um, we're gonna also train uh, some, of, some, of you, some of you that are excited and motivated to be actual facilitators and to scale up that operation so great way for us so some some sort of a personal professional development and of course by showing up and speaking up and be part of this process you are influencing the direction of catalyst this is another grand experiment we're launching you know and we don't know how it's gonna end it's all up to you 
and because you're going to be the you're gonna create it so um so I don't know where Kyle is but uh, uh, <laughs> this is my summary. Maybe it'll show up at some point. Well, you're here in the chat, but are you? Can you be here in a little box in the video and like talking? Um. Well, we will ne <laughs> never mind. So uh, next week, just uh, just be come to the town hall. Reserve some time a bit after this. Oh, Kyle is here. Kyle. Hey. Oh, Hello. excellent. Okay, I clicked the button a few times. Sorry, guys. Um, so, uh, yeah, just, you know, I wanted to give you my experience with the open spaces. I've, I've been kind of working with the Catalyst cohort. And, um, you know, one of the things that I've experienced being in the communities, we're growing so fast. And I'm a huge proponent of solving problems. And so, you know, we walked into this environment and we, we defined a pretty, you know, um, definitive, you know, for the most part, and we walked into a group with not really any idea how we were going to solve it, and we came out with actual solution. From my experience, my greatest colleagues in this space are individuals who I've had the opportunity to, to work in a collaborative environment with, like whether it be a stake pool operator group or a small closed group where we've got some problems to solve for the ecosystem. In engaging those individuals, they've become some of actually probably my best friends on the planet today. And so if we can foster that type of environment within Catalyst where we have a space where we can come and collaborate, you guys can start to make new friends and then we can understand each other's strengths and weaknesses. And when you pair together with individuals, that's what's called that synergy, right? Now we're moving forward. So I was really excited with what we saw. And Doris, right, it, it's one big experiment, but I think we can learn a lot from it. So I'm very grateful um, to see this happen. Yeah, good words. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for, for showing up, giving us Thanks, your guys. Um, so, uh, all right. So one more, so one more big topic to cover. Ah, oh, yeah, we have, yeah. So Catalyst team is growing. Um, not only Catalyst team, but, but IOHK itself is growing. We are recruiting lots of people. So we, uh, so, so Becky, um, head of talent acquisition, Taiuji, uh, made us a, a bit of a, a short video talking about it and I'm gonna show it now. Hello everyone, my name is Becky Jones and I head up the talent acquisition team here at IOHK. Um, it's great to see you all here and um, thank you very much for your time. Um, I just wanted to take a few minutes just to tell you a little bit about some of the roles that we have available um, here. We are hiring quite significantly this year. Um, we have many, many um, available positions. Um, across all of our different business areas, so from product to commercial to professional services, um, through to engineering, um, community and everything in between. Um, if you're interested in, in looking and uh, applying for any of our roles or just having a browse and seeing what we're looking for, um, you can go to our careers page on our website, so iohk.io forward slash careers. Um, everything that is live is currently advertised there. Um, I just specifically for the purpose of this call wanted to introduce you to a role that we are actively hiring for that might be of interest to some of you in this in this group. Um, so we are actually looking right now for a community manager. Um, and this community manager, at least initially, will spend a lot of time working with the Catalyst community. Um, the job description and all of the details are online. If you want to know more, feel free to obviously apply um, or reach out directly to me and I can give you some further information. Um, but obviously being a Catalyst call, we thought it'd be a good way to introduce this role to everybody. Um, we do have, as I said, many other positions um, with, within engineering, specifically for Haskell, Rust and Scala engineers, um, software test engineers, service reliability, 
So there's anything that takes your fancy, please do go to the website and take a look. Um, also, um, we um, are very interested if anybody wants to just connect with us to learn more about the company and how we work, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, my name is Becky Jones. You can also find me on the team page on the IOHK website. Um, so if you're keen to connect, do let me know um, and I'd be happy to talk to you in more detail. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. And um, any questions, please direct them to me. Take care. Okay. Thank, thank you, Becky. Um, so, yeah, so, so community manager for sure. There's a few more. I mean, I mean, we're gonna. I'm gonna bombard you in the next few weeks with with more and more um, open open positions for catalysts because we are we are we are growing. Okay, the like the achievements so far, you know, are mean and the traction we're getting also means we're getting more resources and we can level up like across the board. And so we talked about the community manager role, and we're also hiring. A Rust engineer uh, for for Catalyst and a, and a QA engineer. Uh, we're buffing up that. Um, something that's close to my heart: a technical product manager that actually you know will be working directly and closely with me as we go ahead and decentralize those system. Yay! And uh, so that would be um, uh, you know really working on the working with Shelly on the Shelly node, uh, very te technical, someone that's like uh, engineering, engineering background, maybe like good with math, good with formal definitions, can understand like uh, uh, um, this kind of, this kind of like formal documentation and and yeah, uh, so if you feel you feel you got it, uh, just go to our workable page and and submit. I'm I'm really looking forward. It would be amazing if some really motivated people from the community could take some of these roles. That would be like great. Um. So yeah, so that's about it for today in terms of like presentations. Um, as usual. There's like 999 ways to join Catalyst from many different perspectives and angles. Um, use the links, uh, you know, be warned. It could be, could be a, a maze. <laughs> you could be stuck there longer than you imagined and it might inspire you. <laughs> so good luck. And uh, yeah, and as usual, Oh, maybe we should take. First of all, we have a, we have these polls. Uh, looking at the town halls that uh, we didn't cover, and I, I wanted to just share the findings. So I see uh, we asked like, uh, is the town hall a great way to build relationships? Only fifteen point five percent strongly agree, right? And like about a third are neutral, around a third agree. And like around 12% like disagree or strongly disagree. So definitely um, we can level this up. And I can see another poll was the town hall is a great way to build allies. And we have a 20% strongly agree, 31% agree. And then 44, 44.6%, 45.3% neutral. And uh, so again, it's like we can do a much better job at this. Um, then we had another poll. The town hall provides a simple way to find answers. And actually, like 41% agree, strong, strongly agree, 30% agree, 18% are neutral. I thought, yeah, great. I'm happy that I'm providing answers. Looks pretty solid in there. And lastly, the town hall improves my ability to succeed within Catalyst. Almost 54% strongly agree, which is great. 26% uh, agree and 20% neutral. Okay, so I think across all these four important questions, we want more. Okay, we, we really want this this experience to be to be better. I mean, we it's nice, you know, we, we started this, 
we had kind of kept the same format like since fun two until now and and like time to level up time, like time, time time to go to the next level all right so some questions Vladimir P is asking um Hi, Dor, from your own unique vantage point, what kind of threats to Project Catalyst are attracting your attention nowadays? Anything unexpected? Also, any unexpected positive, positive developments that you didn't en envisage, envisage at, the, at the outset? Thanks for your openness. Okay, so two questions. Um, threats of Project Catalyst are attracting nowadays um, I mean, maybe losing focus, I think, like, you know, like trying to do many things, trying to spread two things over too many things at the same time. I think that's always a threat. And, um, you know, and we're looking to, we're looking to break through, okay, right, right, we're looking to not just, not just, uh, although it, it's, it's incredible, not just to be in charge of the, the Cardano treasury, but we want to add more, more governance, more system for consent um, around like stuff like fees, uh, stuff like important decisions, like integrating the CIP process, um, gradual decentralization to the entire community, but also lots of technological developments and I think the biggest threat is that we'll try to be everything for everyone. And, uh, you know, we don't manage to excel in anything in particular. So I think that's like, as a product manager, this is something I, I, I kind of keep concern on. And, and you know, so I, I really try to, really try to focus on this, the ROI, okay? What, what the outcomes that we're getting and that is a key to our legitimacy as a first focus and I, I want to kind of maintain it as long as we can um let's see what other what other threats um yeah i don't know i don't see i don't see a lot of threats i think that i think that you know i think the only thing i'm feels threatened by is that like i really want us to move move and launch fund four already, uh, fund four and fund five and start fund six and get to that, uh, you know, continue the, continue the doubling of funds. I think we're on track. And I think all the threats are, you know, the, the known threats where we have the safety measures to deal with them. The unknown threats, we don't know what they are. So we're just going to find out together. So we'll see. Then unexpected positive developments. Yeah. I mean, any, I mean, um, yeah, I think I think the rise of community advisors. I did not expect that happening, and it's amazing. I mean, that's what it's like. Like the community advisors, the veteran community advisors, the the, the, the autonomous development of processes that are actually sensible from this community, the ability of this community to self-regulate. Um, that's that's like. For me, that's like uh, an unexpected positive development. Um, I think the I think we're starting to start to see the emergence of the cohort um, as a force. So I'm looking for like I think I see the potential there. So let's see if it's like goes on. Um, yeah, I think there's like a lot of a lot of those. It's just for me, it's like 10, 10 p.m. right now. I'm a bit tired. <laughs> uh, okay, but uh, I, I, I'll, 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 I'll leave it at that. Uh, Jeffrey is asking any updates on voting for Fund Four, Fund Five. Uh, well, I shared the slide. Mm, if everything goes right, next week registration for Fund Four will start. We will have a short registration period, short voting period, then immediately we're going to launch Fund 5, registration and voting, then we're going to launch Fund 6, 
and then um, and you know and we'll have like all these new challenges the community votes again what 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 new challenges are the community going to to vote in nobody knows I want to know um okay and then Te Tevo is asking how long we are going to remain as a testing governance if it's once community holds treasury, what needs to happen before? Great question. Um, so it's going to be as long as it's going to take, like as long as required. Like I think that uh, I think nobody can, it's, it's impossible to time exactly. I think that. What we're seeing, right, if, I don't know if you noticed the trend of like the funds doubling in size every time, like, you know, every, every couple of months, every, every several months, you know, the, 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 power, the, the influence power of the communities is doubled, right? And so far so good. So I think it is gonna, it's gonna double and double and double and double until we get to capacity. And then um, you know, we will look back and, and I think everybody will know, okay, are we legit, you know, and, um, and I think, I hope we kind of continue the, the testing mindsets forever, you know, that we're just going to continue to evolve and we won't take things as granted and, and we realize that everything we, we get, we earn every day and the legitimacy is something that, you know, you're not like a king and you get a you get a king's hat and that's it. And but you actually you work hard, you're accountable, you're dependable, and and you, you earn you earn the legitimacy every single day. And um you know, I think so so I think the the one milestone is like you know the growing managing of treasury funds and our ability to actually produce really convincing outcomes of like how much, how, how, what kind of outcomes are we getting from these funds? I think, uh, you know, the, 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 also the, the scope of what the community is going to govern is going to increase. And definitely in, in this year, in 2021, we're going to launch, we're now working on some like really exciting pilot for the community to govern more, more, more things. And, I feel if we feel if we feel that um, you know we generate a field of good experience, we're making effective decisions, we're making smart decisions, and um, we're and the power is decentralized and it's not ending up controlled by a few individuals, but there's actually lots of different actors and groups that are involved in the governance. Then uh, you know just gonna continue. Uh, on our journey. So, hope that helps. Uh, is Project Catalyst going to be used for voting for network parameters? Uh, yeah, yeah, we will. I mean, in some way, yes, it's, there will be, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we all watch the Charles videos, you know, there's gonna be, we are wanting to pilot a bicameral model, model. Uh, where there will be like a vote in Catalyst, but it'll also be uh, like an on-chain on Shelly vote, um, kind of like two houses. And um, the Catalyst part of it, we're going to pilot it. And so I, we're still hashing out the details, but once we get it cleared up, I will be there. Like, you know, we will all, 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 you will all know about it. Spiritus Tellurus Rex, Drake is asking, <laughs> door when will town hall be available in English? <laughs> you mean not like um, English with a Israeli slash French accent? <laughs> I mean, yeah, imagine if, imagine if all the attraction we got so far was like, not even, we, we haven't even talked in English. And we're just scraping the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> and yeah, maybe, you know, maybe we should need to have a town hall in Chinese. Definitely in Japanese. And um, it would be really, really great. 
Thanks for. Tommy, Dor is this IOG community manager your current job? And if it is, where the heck are you going? So, uh, no, my role is a product manager governance. And uh, we have Danny, who's doing the role of community manager. And now we're recruiting another person to work together with Danny. And, uh, you know, even even uh, upgrade our, our community management capacity. And uh, Dimitri Safin is asking, ooh, that sounds good. Hi, Dor, for our two proposals for Fund4 and Fund5, we collaborated with York University students to build prototype as a capstone project. They've done it and we have prototyped and a demo of it. Uh, can we present at the next community hall, community, uh, community town hall? Can we update the proposals to reflect the work accomplished to inform the voters? Okay, so first of all, there will always be time in this town hall for people to present work that is done. So I just want to bring it out there, okay? So if you did work, it's done, you know, you have like a tangible thing to show. And I'm gonna do everything I can to give you a stage. Just reach out. And uh, and we will do it. Okay, it's not um, you know it's not just like not not just if you got funded. It's like anybody that's actually doing doing things and getting getting stuff done and bringing outcomes is has a place here. Um, so yes, and question two: Can we update the proposals? So. Yeah, it's a bit of an edge case, right? Because of all the delays, like people advanced. <laughs> um, but then, but if we let people update their proposals, like uh, you know, all the work that was done by the assessors that assessed according to that thing in time is now null, and then we'll have to redo it. So I tell you what we're gonna do. So we're going to accommodate very specific edge cases like if uh, if you want to update a link for example then we will allow it um you know so if you want to add like something like a link oh this is done link then we'll allow it and you can contact um marek uh, on telegram on dm or through id scale find marek and uh, maybe someone can share the contact details on the chat and we'll do the best to accommodate. Nick, Sarge, I don't even try. Nick, Nick is asking, uh, last town hall, there was a question to do every 13 weeks a round of proposals instead of 12 weeks, any decision yet? And if so, is there a scheme available already for this year in case of holidays planning? Um, no decision yet. It's probably going to be the decision. Um, definitely, I'll present a scheme and and the schedule and everything. Um, but right now, the focus is getting fund four out of the door. Any relationship between Catalyst and Card Starter? Not that I am aware of. Khalid is asking. Um, can I use the Roy Chrome extension for registration for Fund4? Yes, you can also use the Roy Mobile for registration for Fund4. Quasar is asking, are there any channel partner positions open? Uh, I don't know. You can look at Workable and see. Uh, Quasar is asking, if Cardano is looking to create a new financial and social operating system, why isn't IOHK hiring people in the social science and science space? So how, why do you assume that we're not hiring people in the social science space? I mean, I think that, I would say Governance Alive, for example, that we, we hired are in the social, social science space. Um, I mean, I would say, 
I would say I'm in the social science space like a bit. Um, but um, we could do more. And also the community can hire people in the social science space if you want. Okay, this is, uh, it is yours. It funds are yours to manage and decide on. Um, Antoine is asking, hi, Dor, do you know when fund six proposals will begin? Um, can't tell you a date. We'll just do a, we'll just do a fund four, fund five, and then immediately fund six. And I'm going to, in the next week or two, I'm actually going to share information about fund six so people can start, uh, start getting the juices flowing and start to think about that. So I, I, but I get what you're saying. We're gonna we're gonna do our best to give you this information. Okay. Um, all right. There's, uh, there's only two more questions. I'll just like run through them. Um, Hi, Dor. Can you put us in contact with someone from the stake pool charities? If we could get help from them, it would lighten the load on the catalyst funding we are seeking. We feel we qualify because our mandate is improved sanitation and creating monetary value for Africa, a highly humanitarian effort. He tried to get us help last week, but we got no response. No. Um, okay, I, I, I'm actually not, not a good connection point for stakeable charities, so we're just gonna try again. Anybody in the community and maybe in the chats can, can be a connector to Greg W. Um, you know, we'll do our best. Um, okay, Kako John is asking, is there any update on the Cardano token registry? When will registering be obligatory for the tokens minted on Cardano? Um, I do not, I don't know. Um, good question to ask for tomorrow's um, Cardano 360 event. So probably someone there could help with an answer. And also, it's going to be a really exciting one. I hope you will follow it. Um, going to talk all about some, I don't know if I, need, I can share everything, but there will be some cool updates about Alonzo, for sure. Uh, OK, I think that's it for me. It was cool. I, I really enjoyed everybody's questions. And I, uh, it was a great town hall. And um, you know, next week, we're just going to like hang out in a room together and just talk. <laughs> it wouldn't be that fun. Uh, there will be some, some, some presentations, of course, but, but a lot of me getting to see you, your faces for the first time. And, it's, that's, and that's really, really meaningful for me. So looking forward to next week. Take good care of yourself. And may we lunch. Bye-bye.